Uh, Kier reporting from Stockholm, Sweden, on my very first podcast. Thank you, Bob Grant, for suggesting that I set up a podcast, but because nobody seems to read my Facebook posts, which I think are rather important, especially as I've got a lot of things to say. And I'm always getting banned from Facebook. Um, well, I'm not, I'm not getting banned anymore, not since uh, the whistleblower um, took the air out of um, Zuckerberg's um, um, wing. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm, calling, I'm reporting from Stockholm today, in my very, very first podcast. And it's quite interesting. I just drove past um, Spotify. And uh, Spotify, which controls the world's music, has been very slow to condemn um, a racist, you know, uh, Mr. Rogan, who used the N-word so many times uh, over the years and was a known racist throughout the whole of America. But Spotify, um, without doing a backup check, signed this one up for $100 million. All right? Now, Spotify completely ruined um, the music business because whereas when I was a kid, I, you sell a million albums and Rod Stewart would have a gold album or platinum album or something and, and they would make money. Now, with this streaming thing, um, an artist can stream a million streams and get paid uh, $4,000 if they're lucky. Um, a billion streams, a hundred million or something, um, is uh, thirty-five thousand dollars. So a lot of musicians are just packing up and going away. So when I drive past um, the headquarters, world headquarters, which is owned by a Swede, uh, it, you know, it sort of um, it sort of hits you that this is this man, this organization controls the um, the um, world music. Um, now it's 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 diminished the meaning of rock stars, diminished the meaning of of um, of has diminished the means of people to to live. Um, but it's like this is that's another matter, you know. Well, I'm, well, I'm I was very angry about what happened to Whoopi Goldberg, who made a you know made a, a mistake. She didn't go to an Ivy League school. I went to an Ivy League university. All right. All she said was that uh, uh, she didn't realise that um, under the Nazis, the Jews were um, called a race by the Nazis and persecuted as a race because the Nazis uh, considered themselves as an, an, the Aryan, the super race, and they considered the Jews as an inferior race and they considered... Uh, the blacks, Africans as as completely subhuman, gypsies as uh, uh, as trash, anyone that wasn't German, blonde, blue eyed, and the funny thing is, is that Hitler had Jewish blood in him. When they did a DNA test of sixty of his um, living relatives, they found not only did the, the, did he come from North Africa, but he also had Jewish Sephardic blood in him. All right. Anyway, I'm digressing. Um, Whoopi made a mistake. I listened. I watched it, and then she apologized. She apologized, and um, there was a, it was it was all over the newspapers. Uh, Whoopi Goldberg. Goldberg's a Jewish name, isn't it? Surname, isn't it? And I and I got angry, and I was posting these things like, "Excuse me." Why is it that every single time a black celebrity makes a mistake, they get slaughtered in the media? Why? We didn't, um, we didn't gas anyone. We didn't drop any bombs on anyone. So, um, but it, this time, I think, they went into overkill, not realising that there would be a backlash by the media, that why should she get suspended? She apologized. She made a mistake. She didn't. She didn't. She didn't. She you know. She apologized. Um, what twice or something? But meanwhile, Spotify are promoting this man, this racist, who has a podcast, 
He's like one of the, I think he's the most popular guy that does podcasts. And um, paying him all this money. You know? And they refuse to apologize about it. Which is the sort of Swedish mentality. I know. I've, I, I've been in, lived in Sweden for 25 years. I'm a Swedish citizen. I know what they're like. They don't, they're never, they don't know that they're even being racist. So how's this guy with too much money that controls um, um, such a powerful, uh, such a big part of the, the, the media world going to apologize? Because it doesn't, it doesn't enter his, his Swedish head to, to think that he's done anything wrong by paying somebody $100 million, but de- depriving millions of uh, musicians out of their royalties. He doesn't, that, that doesn't sort of come into his, his head. All right? Meanwhile, I, 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 so, uh, and then uh, Neil Young leaving Spotify doesn't mean anything to them. You know, he's an old, they were insulting Neil Young. I grew up on Neil Young's music. You know, I, I'm not into all this uh, rap and, and crap. Rap, crap, that's what I called it. Hoodlums shouting and, um, and using the N-word every five seconds. No melodies, no nothing. But, you're, you know, you're going to insult um, Neil Young, who's a, who's a legend. He was uh, Cosby Still Nash and Young as a solo artist. Because he said, it's wrong for this man to be... Um, you know, selling misinformation using the Spotify platform. Now, Sweden never had a lockdown. They don't have, they didn't, they, they, they had a few restrictions, 11 o'clock, restaurants have to close, no more than eight people at a time in, 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 in the public, in a restaurant, something like that. But as I speak today, they've lifted um, the latest restrictions that they had. But that nobody, it was never a general lockdown like in the rest of the world. So maybe they, you know, um, Spotify fell. Well, you know, um, the, the guy's got a point or something because we, we Swedes didn't lock ourselves in like the rest of the world. But you died. You died. Only ten million people here, and a lot of people got infected, and a lot of people died. So, um, I'm here in Sweden, and um, as I said, I was driving. I've driven past, and I. And I was watching CNN, and they said that they hadn't heard back from Spotify. That was yesterday. Then Spotify sort of came and doubled down on their support for Paul Rogan. You know? And um, other artists are now threatening to leave that platform, which is a good thing. It's a good thing. You know, that uh, there's a, there's a one, one platform cannot dominate the entire global music market. And I should know because I release music as well. You know, I, 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 I've released a lot of music, um, and um, you can't do anything without getting on Spotify. And um, so, basically, it's it's the Trump effect. It's the Trump effect. Now, I'm I'm unfortunate. I'm lucky in that my father gave me a very good education. You know, I mean, he, uh, education, a- educating his children was extremely important to my father, Godfrey Amakri, Queen's Council, the first um, Nigerian Attorney General, a Solicitor General, and first black man ever to be um, an Undersecretary General of the United Nations. He was there between 1960 and 1965. So I grew up in New York, in a segregated New York, the son of a very powerful diplomat who broke down a lot of racial barriers. So I've been, I've been exposed to racism since I was a kid. You know, it was all over the New York Times that under, black undersecretary general cannot live in New Rochelle. He can't live in a white neighbourhood. And, and, and in the end, we, we, we lived in Westchester, New Rochelle, in a completely white neighbourhood. I didn't realise until I got to university that it was mostly Jewish I wasn't allowed to enter the houses of, of my f- white friends, but they all came to play in our in our guard, and I was the only black person on the bus going to school. But you know, when you're when you're when you're a child and and all you you don't see these things. You don't you know your parents. My parents kept quiet about it. You know, we were protected from all this. But I do remember 
not being allowed to enter the houses of my white friends and not understanding why not. And I'll tell you, if I, I'll, I'll finish off with a funny story about what, how karma works. So um, there I am. I went to Eton College where Boris Johnson, the prime minister, has gone and about, I don't know, about 24, 26 prime ministers have gone to. Um, and I don't like Boris Johnson. I don't think many, I think, you know, he's a second rate man. He's made some comments which have annoyed me. He said um, he couldn't stay in the same room as, uh, as the, with more than one black man. Can you imagine? And he's refused to apologise. So now, when I see him, li- that he lied about the lockdown situation, having parties all the time, number 10, and he's continuing to, down this Trumpian path of lying, thinking that his lies will turn into... Re- in turn into the truth and 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 um, and save his um, premiership, but he's forgotten. Maybe it's because he was born in New York. He's still got this American thing in his head, you know. You know that he, that Eng- the English are as dumb as Americans are, and and he's and he's now um, fighting the head of the Labour Party with the most outrageous allegations, which he can, he can't back up. But nobody takes England anymore seriously anymore because after Brexit, that was it. Big mistake. Big mistake. And then I was unfortunate enough, but lucky enough, to go to a very good university called the University of Pennsylvania, which is an Ivy League school in Philadelphia, where Donald Trump went to. Can you imagine? So I spent a lot of time when Trump was in power posting anti-Trump, Posts, anti racism posts on Facebook. And I was banned and banned and suspended. You know, it was, you know, completely targeted. I mean, they would let um, white people say, oh, Michelle Obama's an ape. Her daughters stole um, um, the, the, the silverware from the White House and they're monkeys. And then if I, if I, if I, when I sort of, um, write, make a comment against that kind of, those kind of comments which are not flagged, I'm the one that gets bag, um, banned for saying, you're a white piece of trash. I get banned. And I got into, I got this, I had this, uh, I had this um, complete contempt for this Mark Zuckerberg character. He sort of, and I knew, right, before this whistleblower came up, I knew what his game was. I know what Murdoch's game is. I know, I know why, you know, in this God complex. And I, and, I, and I wrote over and over and over again that you will, you will fall. No position is permanent, as they say in Africa. That you will one day eat dirt, Mr. Zuckerberg, Mr. Harvard dropout, for the... For the evil that you're promoting on that Facebook thing. I, I had Nazis after me. I had blatant, there was blatant cases of the Russians on that Facebook. You know, they couldn't answer certain questions. So oh, you went to the University of Pennsylvania. What's the name of the communication school there? They couldn't answer things like that. So um, I hope they take all his money. And I hope, I hope everybody leaves that platform. I really do. And, it's, and, and I hope that poor girl um, is respected by Congress and they do pass legislation to control um, social media. Because if they could do that to Rockefeller with Standard Oil back in the 19th century, the first billionaire ever in America, why can't they do that to this Harvard dropout who has no idea about anything except for, for writing, um, um, writing gibberish, um, uh, write, you know, uh, causing despair, depression, oppression, racism, conflict. He, he's made his money from conflict, from suicides. He's evil. 
<laughs> I, I just don't. Anyway, so I don't like him. 